Hey guys, Regan Outdoors here. Uh, just made it to Meteor Crater. I was gonna get here earlier. Unfortunately, there was a tragedy on Half Dome yesterday and I got a call from NBC and uh, they wanted to use my footage on the news segment on that tonight. So I just got off the phone with them and did a quick interview. I don't know if they're gonna use the interview or not, but uh, now I'm here and uh, hopefully uh, not too many people here. Meteor Crater is a meteor impact crater located 37 miles east of Flagstaff, Arizona. I've passed by it multiple times and always wanted to check it out, but I hadn't really gotten a chance until now. A privately owned natural landmark, admission fees are a little more expensive than most government run sites, but it supports operating costs and overhead, and besides, it's worth the money. Where else do you get to see such a massive meteor impact site and learn so much about its history? Inside, they have a really eclectic gift shop, outfitted with Arizona-themed gifts, as well as meteorite jewelry and fragments taken directly from the actual meteorite that crashed here. The Behringer family relies heavily on proceeds from sales of these items to help keep the place running. So when you visit, make sure you pick up a souvenir if it's within your budget. Many notable astronauts, in fact, trained on this very crater for various Apollo missions. This NASA command module was one such piece of training equipment utilized here. As I made my way toward the walkway that overlooks the crater, I noticed a room with a very fun educational display. With lots of activity stations, families with kids will certainly appreciate its entertainment value. I spent a few minutes checking it out before waiting in the main area for my complimentary guided tour to start. It should be mentioned that part of your admission fee includes a free guided tour, and my tour guide was extremely knowledgeable and very approachable. I'm in a half a mile out and back in, so an hour long out there, direct sunlight. But before we do go on out, let me go over a little bit more information about your meteorite fragment here, because it is the original piece. It is not a replica. We get a lot of people passing by seeing this fragment, thinking it is a replica, but it is not. This is pretty much the natural formation of your fragment here. The blackness upon it, you're noticing the fusion crust, which is naturally formed, of course, from the heat. Also, the ablation holes, which are naturally formed. The holes inside here are all of the softer minerals that got burned out as it was entering our atmosphere. This piece is 1,406 pounds. It does get all of its composition or its weight from the composition it carries, which is 92% iron, 7% of it is nickel. The other 1% has a combination of 80 different trace elements combined. So you're also looking at some diamond, platinum, cobalt, iridium, chromium, gold, silver, and that's just to name a few of the elements that are in that 1%. And this is just a fragment off of a 150 foot meteorite. So that 150 foot meteorite was basically the outlook size of our discovery center here from end to end. Just the force, pressure, and speed of it entering our atmosphere, somewhere between 26,000 miles per hour to 40,000 miles per hour or 11 miles per second, created something this huge. It did happen 50,000 years ago, but it wasn't until 1971 that it was proven that it was a meteoritic impact site. At that time, it was at 700 feet deep below. At 50,000 years, it was somewhere estimated between 11 to 1,300 feet deep down before the erosion that has gotten done to this crater here. We don't get much moisture out in this area. We only get about six to eight inches of moisture every year, so that don't do much to this crater. A lot of it is all of the high wind gusts that we get blowing through this surrounding area. We don't have nothing surrounding us, so a lot of that is a lot of high wind gusts that flow through here, strips off about a bit. Made by the impact of a nickel-iron meteorite about 50 meters across in size, estimates put the date of impact at around 50,000 years ago. The crater itself is nearly a mile wide and offers breathtaking views. There's a walkway on the other end of the crater in which you can take a self-guided tour, but this one is far better and much more scenic. Bring you to this point up here. We do give it the name Peter Pan. If you folks aren't scared of heights or anything, want to go near any edge, 
You guys can step right over here. We do have petroglyphs and runes that are located on the eastern side of our crater that show us that we were once upon a time here, along with some of our fragments of our meteorites that they turned into arrowheads used at some point in time, but to be respectful of them, we did keep those fragments at the remaining sites. Following after the natives out here, we did have some other members raising this land, which brings me to telling you about General Custer and his troops out here in 1870. So they were the first people out in the middle of this desert was them trying to locate an area where they were going to place the Santa Fe Railroad tracks that I'm pretty sure most of you all seen coming off of our I-40 there. 1900s where Daniel Beringer was mining for silver at the time in Tucson, Arizona. He came out here in 1902, discovered those fragments for himself. 1903, he filed claims on this area because he thought this place was going to bring him a lot more money than mining for that silver. He came up here to the middle of this desert, started doing his mining operation inside this crater for 25, 26 years of his life, drilling 28 different mine shafts inside this crater, hoping to locate some big chunks of iron because his idea was to sell it to the Santa Fe Railroad checks to inherit a lot of that money for himself, which never even happened as planned for Dar Daniel Ferringer here. 25, 26 years, 28 different mine shafts, your big 150 foot meteorite came down with so much force, pressure and speed that it didn't have enough kinetic energy to do anything here with this bottom ground so it basically ejected all its debris back up out of the crater leaving no fragments at all for Daniel Beringer to find here. The tour was about an hour long. I'm used to both high altitude and high temperatures so I didn't bring any water but if you're not it's a good idea to bring some fluids with you or at least drink a good amount beforehand. They used to get pores around the crater and inside we caused about 500,000 years of erosion right us just walking and going inside so they just continued that and after that it's been lesser filling than what it has been oh good and uh the petroglyphs have they always been off limits to people yes good yeah nobody really goes on that side the only people that are able to go around of course are geologists scientists researchers some of us employees that have to go check the perimeter we do have people that tend to take the back road and try to sneak to the back are you kidding so me wow have, i mean well that's if you can make it through that whole <laughs> dirt road it's yeah. like a washboard so you're if you have a car you're rattling everything inside so it's probably doing more damage than the uh, 20 bucks to get in here huh <laughs> yeah <basically. laughs> seriously does anyone want me to cut them out of youtube anyone don't want to be in youtube you guys okay with that all right thank you if you folks come a little bit closer and take a look within this rock fragment here, it looks like as if we rolled it around mm. in a bunch of glitter. And the reason for that oh, wow. given is through all the heat and pressure. As I mentioned, your meteorite being so molten heat and on fire that it compressed through all these different rock layers shocking these different rock layers forming a type of dense crystal quartz structure scattered in every direction we are still picking up our fragments of our meteorites that we do sell to you folks inside our gift shop our meteorite basically came down with so much force pressure and speed that i mentioned it got ejected out that it disintegrated vaporized and burned into all these different rock layers out here turning it into meteor oxide instead of actual iron core pieces such as that one inside our discovery center there so with that i do have some hematite spheres in my hand here which are magnetic and since all of our meteorite consists of so much iron they will get attracted to our magnet and if you want there's still a little bit of fragments there but if you can go ahead roll it around in the ground there you want to take that one roll it in the ground oh wow and there you go huh. we're basically walking cool. all over you want to try one <laughs> so there you go, your 150 foot meteorite, sand like particles while walking all over your shooting star. So you folks, you know, make your wishes before we get back to the building, hopefully one of them did come too. I cut the tour footage way down, showing a few key moments. This tour will give you all of the information you'll ever need to have a complete understanding of the history of Meteor Crater, and I highly recommend it. this building here bring you to the Stackstone building your first museum or of course your homestead building where Daniel Beringer did his home whole homestead at of course this museum where the building got turned into your first museum after the Samuel Holsinger meteorite had gone found in 1908 
They made a little patch here at the corner of the building where a cemented slab is where they placed that big meteorite fragment. And once again, like I mentioned, turned this into your first museum. This here was made so that way the miners can store their food. There was no electricity out here during the mining operation. Meteor Crater is an amazing place. Though natural erosion is slowly filling it back in, it'll be around for a few hundred thousand more years. Plenty of time for a second visit. As is the case with many places I visit, photos and videos just don't do this place justice. You really need to come see it for yourself. All right guys, so that was uh, Meteor Crater here. It's private property, but uh, very immaculately maintained. And a lot of features, a lot of history, a lot of science, a lot of interactive displays. It's definitely amazing in person. I'm not gonna use a Grand Canyon reference, but it's really amazing in person. It's one of those places. The photos aren't gonna do it justice. All right, back in the parking lot. That was awesome, and uh, I'm gonna be coming back. That was a lot of fun, and you guys should definitely check it out. Well worth the uh, 20 bucks. Until next time.